exercise intensity like high intensity interval training has been shown to have unique benefits for brain health. Um, obviously, all types of exercise are beneficial for the brain, but high intensity exercise may have additional neuroprotective and cognitive benefits. And one of the mechanisms that's thought to underlie this is, you know, the, the unique effects of you know, vigorous intensity exercise or hit on the brain because of the lactate production. So during high intensity exercise, lactate is produced in large amounts, as we've talked about, um, largely as a byproduct of the metabolic stress, you're, you're kind of pushing that anaerobic threshold. And when you produce lactate, it's getting into circulation and it can cross the blood brain barrier. There are lactate transporters, MCT transporters, on the blood brain barrier and it can you know cross the blood brain barrier and get into the brain where it then acts as a signal and it triggers a variety of beneficial adaptations so um, let's talk about some of those first you know lactate can be used by neurons as a preferential energy source so it's it's actually energetically favorable it takes less energy for mitochondria to to mitochondria to use lactate versus glucose. So um, in fact, m neurons are, are used to using lactate because astrocytes in the brain, which are a, a supporting cell for neurons, are mostly glycolytic. That means they're mostly using glucose as energy, they're not using mitochondria, and they're producing lactate as a byproduct. So astrocytes are churning out tons of lactate in the brain, and that lactate is be being taken up, you know, by neurons through the the MCT transporters and used as energy. So um, uh, there's actually even been studies showing that the brain is working harder during exercise, much like the muscles are working harder, your heart's working harder. And it's been shown that lactate actually fuels the brain during exercise. So that that lactate that's being translate um, that's being transferred into circulation is being just soaked up by the brain, and it's fueling the brain brain activity during exercise. Now, another benefit of of neurons in the brain using lactate as an energy source instead of glucose is it spares glucose. It's freeing up glucose to be used by another biochemical pathway, um, known as the pentose phosphate pathway. And this pathway uses glucose to make precursors called NADPH that's needed for the production of one of the most powerful antioxidant systems in the brain called glutathione. So the less glucose is being taken up by neurons to be used as energy, the more it can be spared to be used in this pentose phosphate pathway to make glutathione. And this has really important relevance not only for just you know normal brain aging right i mean if you're if you're able to use more of the lactate as energy and spare glucose and make more glutathione in the brain generally speaking that's going to be more beneficial for just normal brain aging but it has special relevance also for traumatic brain injury tbi because you know that when there's that you know bolus of damage that's that's been been done that that traumatic um, brain injury then glutathione is needed the most. But you're also needing, you know, glucose for neurons as well. Um, and so, and, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's also awful because, you know, astrocytes, which are usually making lactate for the neurons, also become damaged during a TBI. And so there's a lactate shortage for neurons. Um, and there's been a few studies showing that a few infusion, um, P, when there's TBI, uh, patients with TBI that get infused with sodium lactate, this actually improves TBI outcomes. And this is, you know, measured by the, the glass cow scores. So, um, you know, generally speaking, I think that this glucose sparing effect also, you know, th there's some evidence, again, obviously direct evidence with TBI outcomes that's been shown to have, you know, improvements in TBI, TBI outcomes. I'm proposing a mechanism here with glucose sparing um, with, respect to the, with respect to lactate. Um, lactate, again, also stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis. Animal studies have shown this in the brain and neurons as well. Um, we don't have direct human evidence of that, but um, there's no reason to think that wouldn't be a conserved mechanism. So I think, you know, we covered the importance of brain lactate, energetically speaking. It's energetically favorable, 
right? Neuron, neurons pr preferentially, they prefer to use it. Um, we talked about the glucose sparing, but let's go back to the signaling molecule aspect. As we talked about earlier in the muscles, we talked about it increasing GLUT4 transporters. Um, it's also a signaling molecule in the brain. Um, you know, it's, it's acting as a messenger. It's a way for the muscles to communicate with the brain directly. And um, when neurons in the brain are using more lactate, they're, re they're releasing uh, a variety of neurotransmitters. They release more norepinephrine, for example, so to help the brain working better, to, to have more focus and attention. Um, it also signals to the brain to make more brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. And I mean, this is a very powerful neurotrophic factor. It promotes the survival, the growth, and the function of neurons. It plays a crucial role in neuroplasticity. So this is the, the ability of the brain to adapt, to form new connections. Higher levels of BDNF have been linked to improve cognitive function, enhanced memory, protection against neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Um, if you want to put this in sen a sensational words uh, to explain it, BDNF is the youth elixir for the brain, and exercising muscles produce lactate to help you bathe your brain in it. So um, that's a little, uh, a sort of simplistic and more sensational way of thinking about it. But essentially, that's what's happening when the lactate's increasing BDNF in the brain. Um, lactate is also a messenger, not only in the brain, but at the blood-brain barrier. Um, you know, this is made up of tiny blood vessels. We covered this in a podcast with Dr. Axel Montaigne. So lactate signals to increase another growth factor at the blood-brain barrier called VEGF. And um, this is vascular endothelial growth factor. This helps grow new tiny bus uh, vessels. It's called, this is called angiogenesis, the growth of new tiny blood vessels. It helps them grow at the blood-brain barrier. It also helps repair damaged blood vessels. I mean, these are, these are, these are things that are you know, important for preventing the breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. So essentially, VEGF is increasing the vascular density. And breakdown of the blood-brain barrier is a major cause of, blood, of brain aging. Um, it's a major cause of, of neuroinflammation. It contributes to the vicious cycle of neuroinflammation. And there's also emerging evidence that now suggests breakdown of the blood-brain bar barrier is one of the earliest signs of dementia. So again, um, I, another reason why vigorous intensity exercise through that just generation of a lot of lactate, then getting to the brain, getting to the blood-brain barrier has unique benefits on overall brain health. Uh, it's important to know, I guess, this is, you know, th there are benefits to high intensity exercise on the brain that are not just exclusive to lactate, right? So there's increased blood flow. Uh, there's the improved cardiovascular fitness, the release of neurotransmitters, the release of endorphins. You know, all, all of these things contribute to the positive effects of physical activity on the brain. But vigorous intensity exercise, I do think has some unique and very robust effects on brain health because of that lactate. And so I really wanted to kind of dive deep into that so that you guys understand that. You know, your muscles are being pushed to work extra hard, and this is then now causing adaptations in the brain that are pretty substantial.